she needs a suitable knife, and she spotted one. Fish knife, yeah. But it's a fish knife she's going to use to cut the meat. Use a filter knife for that. Yep. So I, I would never play with that. See, because it bends. All oh, right. That's why yeah. I like using it. I want to put it. So that's cooked chicken to raw liver and a potentially contaminated purchase, all for a bargain price. What James has seen Kelly doing isn't just about breaking Tesco's rules. It could be a real risk to customers. Over the next few weeks, there'd be other times when James and I would wonder if we should say something about what we're seeing. Sammy's still at Katsori's, making supermarket ready meals, and I'm getting daily updates. There are strict rules in place about keeping this food cold. Today, Sammy's filming the fate of some ready-made meals, destined for Tesco. It's five o'clock, and he's starting his shift. He spotted some ready-made meals on trays at the side of the production area. Here we have beef lasagna. Salmonella bacteria, found in hummus at this factory just a few weeks ago, can grow if food like this is not properly chilled. Sammy asks the quality controller how long the meal should be left sitting around. No longer than one hour, so... No, 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 but, you know, people are busy, so they keep outside for long time. That's not good. Mm -hmm. Bacteria can go, grow inside. That's no good no, if you leave it outside. Almost. It's now almost one in the morning. Sammy's shift is about to finish, but he checks the meals once more. Uh, Tesco beef lasagna, 10, 15 hours made. Some of these ready-made meals have been sitting here for four hours or more. Lamb lasagna, 9.30, 7.15. Kat Soris would later tell me that any breaches of company rules in the area of hygiene and food safety are unacceptable. To me, these look like conditions for another possible food poisoning outbreak. I'm starting to wonder if it is just me. If some supermarket food is really unsafe, surely more people would be getting sick. I'm told one in 10 people are affected by food poisoning every year. And in the vast majority of cases, the cause is never known. I'm still working undercover when I meet a woman who knows exactly how she got food poisoning. I was swollen up just like a big balloon. All I wanted to do was just curl up in a corner, and that's exactly what I did for day after day. Jenny told me she developed scrumbotoxin poisoning from fish she'd bought from the seafood section at Tesco in Wiltshire. She lost consciousness and was rushed to hospital by ambulance. I think it took me about six weeks before I felt my normal self again. Scrombotoxin poisoning can occur in oily fish when it warms up. When Jenny took Tesco to court, they said they weren't to blame for her food poisoning because they'd kept the fish at the right temperature and they had the records to prove it. Tesco has produced a fascinating set of documentation and there was a lot of it. They could track my fish right back to the fishing boat that caught it on the North Sea. They knew which boat had caught it. They followed that fish all the way up the chill chain into Tesco's supermarket and from Tesco's supermarket to me. Fridge temperatures, pages and pages, every single day, at least once. Jenny won her case for other reasons, but James starts to wonder about the fridge temperature records he's seen. In his branch of Tesco, he comes across temperature records just like the ones Jenny described. But there's a catch. The log is meant to show the temperature of the fridges where the fish is kept, but there are lots of gaps and other entries that seem to have been made up. And it's back. Just here, it should be refrigerator check to make sure the fridge is at the right temperatures. It's not been done. 
but curiously, Christmas Day, it was checked and the store was closed. The records have been faked and it's not long before James's boss Kelly gives him a masterclass on how to do it. You were here yesterday morning with us at 7 o'clock? 7 o'clock. 7 a.m. Yeah. And then, so time check is 7. And then you do another one two hours later. So 11? 11? Yeah, like that. James is to fill in yesterday's temperature checks and just make up the figures. So, I don't know. Let's take the, let's take the, let's just use this one. Three. Three. So you work three there. So for three. It may be a pack of lies, but it could be useful in a future court case. Yeah. Of course it might be a one-off, but this looks less likely when I walk into my branch of Sainsbury's to find my boss Leslie faking temperatures too. Uh, two one two two. That's what they're expecting. But in a high one every so often two four, two three. The fridge temperatures weren't properly checked yesterday, but it's okay. Leslie just makes them up today. Another supermarket secret just behind the scenes at Sainsbury's. At Tesco, there's another. James has found some ready-to-eat crab claws completely encased in ice. He asks Kelly about it. See this? All these crystals on it. That means that it's That's slightly like frosted and been frozen. It's clear from Kelly the crab claws have been defrosted, then refrozen. I know you're not supposed to freeze and refreeze stuff. Yeah. Once defrosted, it can be dangerous to refreeze ready-to-eat fish. It can increase the risk of food poisoning. James has found some ready-to-eat prawns, which are defrosted. <laughs> Kelly asks him to do exactly what he shouldn't, refreeze them. So can these all go back in the freezer? Yeah. How are they? They're all right. They've still got frost on them. Still got frost on them, yeah. yeah. Two days later, they're back on sale. Frozen, thawed, refrozen. A possible health hazard, but at a bargain price that customers love. It's quiet, so James has nipped out to the yard to throw away some empty boxes. Then, out of the corner of his eye, he thinks he spots something. Under a cage, just out of shot of the camera, there's a rat in the yard. He talks to a colleague about it. Did you see one? I'll tell you what, you used to stay around there at night, uh -huh. and that compactor, and see 30 come out, honestly. 30 yeah. rats? Yeah. What, I said that door? Yeah, you stand there, if you stand there for a minute, yeah. if you stand there for one minute, you'd see it, like 20 rats. Yeah. 20 rats? Yeah. You wouldn't believe how difficult it is to film rats, uh, especially on a secret filming camera. Uh, but members of staff have told me that they're not just outside the warehouse, but inside as well. The Bernard Matthews factory and farm at the centre of an outbreak of bird flu had been warned a number of times about failures in hygiene standards. And some of the sheds... I'm a few months into my investigation when an avian flu alert leads me to a farm, Crown Chicken, that supplies poultry to Sainsbury's. Got established in a flock kept securely indoors. The All the news coverage centred around the biosecurity necessary to stop the virus spreading. Today's report has possible answers. I receive a tip-off from an animal welfare group. They raise concerns about the conditions on the poultry farm that supplies Sainsbury's. It's just a few miles from where avian flu was discovered. I have to visit late at night and in secret. I have never done anything like this before in my life. And I'm about to go into a farm uninvited. An investigator from the group comes with me to show me the way. It's in the middle of nowhere, down some quiet country lane, um, and I'm pretty petrified. To stop viruses spreading, there are strict biosecurity rules in place. 
all bins containing waste and dead chickens should be securely closed. But here at Crown Chicken, they're not. Mm -hmm.